phone call is being recorded. <laughs> yes, for posterity. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing this. What we want to do, Val, is to create a video of how the Masterson Method came to be. It begins with how Jim got started. The thing I remember is standing in the aisle and you had all, I don't know if you had all the brushes out, but you would pick a brush up and you would tell Jim <laughs> what the brush was and what you did with it. And I remember him just thinking, you know, this brush is as good as that brush. And, you know, what's the big deal here? I mean, he had a great way with the horses, always. He, mm -hmm. But he just didn't know a whole lot. I think one of the, the funniest things, at least to me, that Jim, that I always had to watch out for with Jim was he was always leaving stall doors unlatched. And I was just sure that a horse was going to escape. <laughs> And I guess he got it pretty good because by the time we went to Gulfport, he was my right hand. I mean, he was the only groom I had. He was the only helper I had. And I think we probably took like five or six horses down there. Wow. Misty when I was 12. We were living in the Philippines outside of Clark Air Base. My dad was a private contractor pilot and my parents bought me this pony for $125. That's all he cost. And uh, when we left the Philippines we sold him to General Westmoreland's daughter. And so we kept a photocopy of the check. Because Aren't you we were, hoity I am hoity toity. <laughs> and General Westmoreland was the commander of US forces in Vietnam. So. That was my first claim to fame. I got started on the body work. I would watch other massage therapists working on horses and uh, see the responses of the horses. And they were they weren't looking for responses. They were looking. They were doing what they were trained to do. And I was watching what the horse was doing. And um, that's when I started to notice these subtle changes in the horse's behavior. The next subsequent years, I wouldn't groom. I would haul the horses down there for her. And that's when I really started to pick up uh, body bodywork clients. And I would build my business one horse at a time. You build by word of mouth and by reputation. And you gain a couple horses, you lose you lose a horse. You gain a couple, you lose a horse. But that's how you build your business. And eventually, you, the momentum starts to build. And it's like what you call the last man standing rule. You, uh, if you stick with it, if you love what you're doing, it's going to reach a kind of a critical mass point where things start to build. So then you took Jim on, the two of you worked together. Yes. And, you know, like how many horses were you doing between the two of you? I would say with the, just the two of us, probably somewhere around the, the 20 to 25 horses a day. Oh, maybe, that's just amazing. Yeah, maybe five days a week. So we, we were doing over 100 horses a week. Wow. So I knew when I was working on horses that people were going to learn this because it's, it's so interactive with the horse and that's why we have horses to interact with them in a relationship with them. And that it's, it's learnable. It's something you don't have to know a lot of anatomy to start. You just have to learn how to read the horse. Our first seminar in the States was in Tryon, North Carolina. It, it went very well and it kind of started to build from there. I spent half of my time working on horses and then half of our time we spent finding people that wanted to do seminars and we, you know, we did our first website ourselves. But horses we. It was me well, and yeah. Nancy. <laughs> yeah, you and Nancy did the website and, yeah. and started. Well, we, would, we had a little teeny office mm -hmm. and Nancy sat facing yeah. opposite me and I, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we would turn around and talk to mm -hmm. each other yeah. and then turn back. And I had a little school desk about that big yeah, in the corner right. that you let me have a little desk in the <laughs> corner so I could go in and pretend I was working at the desk every <laughs> once in a while. Uh, got the website going and then same as building your bodywork business. It start, started building one seminar at a time and we started in Tryon, North Carolina and then California and we started doing weekend seminars at Stanford. 
at the Red Barn uh, Equestrian Center. So it started building and we started growing and doing more and more and more and more and then we had to move into a bigger office. got going in Europe, it took off pretty fast, especially in England, and we kept adding, every year we went to England in quite a few seminars. We eventually grew to the point where we needed an overseas manager, which we have now. We have Vicki Devlin as our overseas manager, and she started not even taking a seminar. She started, uh, I was doing a seminar in Wales, and she happened to be there helping the, the barn owner organize the horses and everything, and she was just peeking around the corner watching all these techniques, and I could tell she was interested. I said, well, just join the class. So she joined the class, and she ended up being our overseas manager. She's uh, just very well organized. She took to the work. She just picked it up naturally, and she has a passion for it. And so now she's our manager for all of our overseas courses, except for Canada and the U.S., so all of England, all of Europe. She organizes Australia. We now have practitioners, or two instructors in South Africa. We have an instructor in Australia. We have Diane Howard doing Europe. As we grow in Europe, we're adding instructors for our countries, Walter Sachs in Germany, Beata in Poland. And uh, teaching in their native language. Oh, they're teaching in their native languages. The one thing I, I would like to say is I think just watching Jim work, I find my own heart rate drop and I relax. And I love watching him with horses. I think the rapport and the calmness that he has in himself, but also that he then relates to the horses, is really an exceptionally special skill. Jim is, is a very special man. We have Beyond Horse Massage in Polish, in Spanish, in French, in German, in English. I can talk all day about how we got started and how many how many books we've sold and how many countries we're in. But what this really is about is about uh, the horse. So my personal goal is that every horse on the planet has the bladder meridian done to it. So this is really about you. It's about I can't do this without getting emotional. I know. <laughs> it's so sweet that you're getting emotional. Because it's true. Well, it'd be, if I could talk, it'd be good. It's <laughs> so really about you as practitioners and as instructors getting the word out, reaching as many people as you can. It's, this is a very visual way of working on the horse, and when people see it, they get it. So it's really about you. It's about getting out there, working on horses, building your businesses, having the confidence to do it, and get as many horses yawning as you can, because that yawn is like our trademark. When the horse releases tension, this is what we get. And that's what gets people going and that's what keeps us going.